Hello, and thank you for joining us today on Go Ed Tech Go for activity 435, Smoking Can Cost You an Arm and a Leg. As you complete this activity, you will learn how simple measures of pressure in blood vessels can pinpoint problems in blood flow and how body systems work together to maintain blood pressure and volume. In this activity, you will investigate the symptoms of a fictional patient, evaluate diagnostic tests, and recommend medical interventions as you work through a four-part case study. You must complete each part of the case before you receive the next part. You will practice a diagnostic test used to assess circulation and will use ultrasound to listen to sound waves as blood flows through a vessel. This is patient John Jones. John Jones has always been relatively healthy. He eats well, but he has smoked a pack a day on and off for 30 years. John was an athlete in college, and even though he is in his 50s now, he still gets out running or walking at least twice a week. Lately, he has noticed cramping in his right calf when he exercises. The pain goes away once he stops and rests, but John is starting to think that something might be wrong. John also reports frequent tingling in his leg, almost like it's falling asleep. In part one, you diagnose John's disorder. One simple test for diagnosing this disorder is called the Ankle Brachial Index, or ABI. Record the answers for this part on your student resource sheet. For part three, we're gonna find the ABI for the patient. The ABI is a painless measurement that evaluates the circulation in your legs. In this simple test, the doctor listens to the flow of blood and measures the blood pressure in both the arms and the feet. Normally, these two pressures should be about equal. A significantly lower pressure in the ankle usually indicates that there is a problem with blood flow in the legs. Doppler ultrasound uses reflected sound waves to assess blood flow through a vessel. In this activity, you will use a Doppler device to listen to blood moving through the vessels of the arm and ankle and use systolic pressure values to compute an ABI. For this lab, we're gonna need ultrasound gel, a pocket fetal Doppler, a blood pressure cuff, and a towel so we can wipe off the excess of the ultrasound gel. I'm gonna show you how to put the blood pressure cuff on for the ABI. You can see that on the blood pressure cuff, it shows an arrow for where, on the left arm, where the artery should go, on the right arm, where the artery should go. So we're gonna put this on the patient. And since we're on the right arm, we're gonna move this over just a little bit to line it up with that brachial artery. We're gonna get this nice and snug. Okay. And we're gonna take a reading on the gauge for blood pressure. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ultrasound gel. And we're gonna apply ultrasound gel on the antecubital area. A little tricky here. I'm gonna move that around just a tiny bit. And we're gonna use this fetal Doppler here. You can see if I touch it, again, it has sound. And we're gonna to try to find, let's set this closer. We're gonna try and find the sound of that artery. Now that we've found the sound, we're gonna pump this up and we're gonna take a look at when we do not hear the sound of the artery or blood going through that artery anymore. So we're gonna pump it up to 200. And we're gonna see when it returns. See it's slowly coming down. Open it up just a tiny bit more. Okay, and we're gonna listen for the return of that blood flow. Somewhere around 130 for the right arm. Since we had 130 for the right arm, we're gonna click on the box and type in 130. We're gonna use the pocket fetal Doppler. 
with some ultrasound gel. You can see we already have the blood pressure cuff wrapped and we're going to take a reading from this gauge in order to find the AVI. So the first thing we're going to do is apply some ultrasound gel in the antecubital area and we're going to turn on the fetal Doppler. And what you'll notice is it has a sound whenever you have a heartbeat or it has a touch. So I'm going to have to find, I'm going to find the, the pulse on her. Let me actually set this here. Okay. And she's going to help me since it's only two of us. And I'm going to set this a little closer so you can hear it. I'm going to help her find it. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pump this up to about 200. And we're going to get a reading because it's going to stop beating. We're going to get a reading for when it actually, you can hear the sound again. The sound has gone away. I'm going to slowly release it. And as it releases, we're going to listen for the sound. So the sound re came back at about 120. Okay. And so that is the reading for the left arm. We have the reading for the left arm. So now we're going to click in the box and put in 120. So for the ankle portion, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the blood pressure cuff, and this time we're gonna put it around the lower end of the leg and tighten it up. And we're going to take a reading on this gauge. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply the ultrasound gel. I'm gonna turn on my fetal Doppler. See it has sound. So let's see if we can find the sound of the blood going through. Release it and see if we can hear it come back. And we heard it about 120. In order to find the posterior tibial pulse, you're going to go to the medial side underneath the medial malleolus, and you can get the reading for the posterior tibial ABI. For the right ankle, we took the dorsalis pedis, we didn't take the posterior tibial, and we got a value of 120. And lastly, we're gonna do the left leg the same way. I'm gonna put ultrasound gel on top of the foot. We're gonna turn on our fetal Doppler, and as you can see, test it out for sound. And we're gonna find a pulse. Put this a little bit closer so you can hear it. I'm going to pump it up to see if we can hear the return of blood flow. Release it slowly. And it's somewhere around 130. And there are your measurements for ABI. For the left ankle, dorsalis pedis, we got 130. So we're going to type 130 in. And then we are going to find our right and our left ABI values, and then an overall ABI value. Now that we have all of our values, we can find the right ABI value. It says the higher of the right ankle pressures. Out of these two, we only did one. So this is 120, the value was here. And you're gonna look for the higher arm pressure with the right or the left, which is 130. Type in 130 here. I'm gonna do the math and do the division and find that 
The ABI on the right side is 0 0.92. On the left side, we're gonna find the higher of the left ankle pressures. We only did one, so we got 130. And on the higher of the arm pressures, it was 130 again. So we're gonna put 130, and we're gonna do the math and find that the ABI on the left side is 1.00. It says the lower of the numbers is the patient's overall ABI. This would be the lower, so it's 0 0.92. In part four, getting help, John finally agreed to go in for simple testing. The report from his ABI testing can be found here. You can see that the values have been put in. You're going to use the same method as before to find the right ABI, the left ABI, and the overall ABI for John. You're gonna compute these, and then you're going to look at this ankle brachial index interpretation, and you are going to find the values, and you are going to answer the questions in the next section.